So let's take a look at how to actually see these validation warnings, how to actually work with these data types in SSIS. We spent three or four videos prior to this one in this chapter talking about, you know, here's how to look at mappings and here's what they are. But I want to show you now how to actually start using them. Still a bit premature because we haven't gone through each of the sources and each of the destinations and each of the transformations, <sighs> but we can at least do a little bit of it. So tell you what I'm going to do. Let me just create some little throwaway project here, as I've done, I bet, a hundred times in the course so far. So just some little integration services project here. And when it comes up, what I'm going to do, I, um, here's what we'll do. We'll create an Excel spreadsheet. And it'll be, uh, what could we do, like a course ID and a title, um, a start date, for example. And so this is course 158. And the title I haven't decided, but it's probably something like SQL Server 2008 Integration Services. And I don't know, October 31st, 2009, I guess. I, depends on when I finish the videos. Uh, 157 SQL Server 2008 DBA. I don't know. I started that last year. Um, uh, it's good enough because I can't remember all of them. <laughs> a bunch. Uh, so let me just save this file as, I'll do a 2003. I don't think I've done that one uh, in any of these just yet. So uh, we'll just call it courses.xls. And I want to load this into a SQL Server. So let me launch a SQL Server, launch the Management Studio, wire up to a SQL 2008 box. Uh, I will use the learnitfirst.com database, so I'll, I'll actually script this out so uh, in case you wanted to follow along later on, I'll save these files. Uh, create table dbo.course and course ID and not null, just make it the primary key, title. All of my titles are variable character, maybe 256, I can't remember, uh, but they're not Unicode, I know that much. And day of course debut, okay, and we'll make that a date, time, okay. And so there we go. Uh, you'll notice that the day of course debut column is not the same name as the Excel spreadsheets start date column, okay. Let me save this. This is going to be data types 04. So data types 04. And you know, if I don't go back right now and change that courses.xls to data types 04, I will forget to put this with this video. So what we want to do is just take data types 04.xls. We want to load it into the SQL Server database. What could be easier? Well, let's go to SSIS. Let's create ourselves a data flow task. Drill in here. It's actually going to be pretty simple. We've got our Excel source. And I can go configure a connection manager for Excel. Make sure I choose 2003. And it, mine was in sheet one. If you ever get confused, you can use the preview button to show you which sheet has the actual data. Uh, you can use named regions as well in Excel. So columns. Notice, okay, so I know I've talked about this, but notice these, these idea of columns, the external column and the output column. Yes, I know in an earlier video, we spent a bunch of time detailing these, but just in case that you may have not seen that one or may not remember, remember this term external. I want you to remember that term, you notice external columns and external column here. I want you to remember that for later on because we're going to talk about not this video but the next video we're going to talk about external metadata and what that is so just remember that 
For the time being, I want you to consider external, meaning that it is in the actual source. So external means that these are the actual columns in the source file. However, if you remember, oh gosh, I don't even know, three videos ago, two videos ago, we talked about the ETL process and we talked about how the source will actually load up the data and then it will parse the data and then it will convert the data into an SSIS data type. Well, the output of such a process is the output column. Now, generally speaking, the output column has the same name as the external column. So you're doing a one-to-one -one mapping. Life is so much easier this way. However, it's not a requirement. Okay, what I could do, and I'm just going to do this for effect to show you, is I'm going to change the name down here to start date to add date. Kind of a subtle difference here. In the Excel spreadsheet, it's known as start date, but forevermore, here within SSIS's data flow task, that column will be exposed by the source as the add date column. So the output column is what the output of the source is. So coming out of the source, on this connector right here are the output columns. So everything that we put in the output column, the names of the columns, the names, uh, the types, that's what's coming out here. Oh, wait a minute. I said the types. Did you see a way, and let me hit escape here. Did you see a way in here, and I'm just double clicking, to assign the type to the output column? No. Maybe we can right click over here. No. We right click up like you can in Windows. No. Not in the error output. Well, how do we decide the data type then? Not on this screen, that's how. Now this data type, if you take a look, SSIS has determined that the course ID column is a float data type. Now this is a very, very common thing for SSIS to do. In reality, course ID was an integer, but SSIS has determined that it's a float. Okay, so that's actually wrong. A float has decimal places. Our course IDs don't. They were numbers like 158 and 157. They are integers. Okay, so it's wrong. It parsed it incorrectly. Worse, the output column has been also made a float as well. Bad SSIS. We've got to change it. We need it to be an integer. Okay. Now, you got a couple of choices here. Okay? Take a look over here. Let's, I'll tell you what, let me do this. Let me first go to my SQL Server destination. And uh, let's just configure it. Let's just drag onto here. Configure my destination. Make a connection manager to the local learnitfirst.com database. Uh, use my uh, tables. What was the, the table that I created there? Oh, no, I... I didn't create it. I saved the script, but I didn't create it. So, uh, so let's just cancel out of here. Come back in, and it refreshed it. So dbo.course. There it is. Notice the day of course debut. And under mappings, take a look. Remember how we made the source output column add date? Well, that's what we get. We have no way to access the column start date from the source because we aliased it or we renamed it during the output to add date. Okay, now we've got an if you here. Put your cursor right here. Remember our float data type for course ID? That's what it, SSIS picked up from Excel. However, the SQL Server version is a four byte signed integer. That's correct. So when I drag this over here, so notice that I'm just going to take that over. And when we look at this, this is a, a DT underscore date. And this is a DT DB's timestamp. <sighs> Boy, vey, we've got to deal with all this. How about the title? This is going to be a wide string. And this is going to be an STR. Okay. Gosh, we've got a lot of issues to deal with here. We've got conversion errors. Okay, so we need to go up to our error list so that we can actually view the errors. 
bring this down here. So we can see we, we have actually several errors that we must deal with to make this package run. If we try to make the package run right now, we get package validation errors. Okay, so it cannot do conversions. Those are illegal. So it's validating the metadata and it's saying, nope, cannot do that. And so we can see course ID, title, add date, all columns have made this broken.